All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Live in the Shop with Custom Lows. It is part four of this F-150 underseat build. We got the main structure built. We got a few more fine details. We got a thing, few things to do on the top, but we're getting there, and it's looking good so far. I want to add some 45s to the corners, so I'm going to be putting those in now. Now, one thing is the top actually is inset, so the sides and the top of the box sit higher than the top if that makes sense so i'm going to put a three-quarter spacer on the bottom and uh, just tack nail this in and then i'm going to use my pole saw cut it with the angle on there it's just the easiest way to do it i'll pull it back off and then i can uh, glue and nail it into the final placement afterward i remove the spacer all right so I need to put our nails in here. All right, so one nail should hold it just fine. Then I'm just going to use the actual enclosure as kind of a guide for where to cut it. sand it a little bit and then it's basically perfect need some heavier grit sandpaper I'll use I guess 80 I haven't even opened this yet. All right, I gotta have some scissors somewhere. Oh boy. Once I take the three-quarter spacer out, it makes it the perfect size for the front of the piece.
All right, so that gives us our 45 inside the box on the front, basically kind of attaching the wall and the back, side wall and the baffle together a little better. Okay, one more on this side. We're gonna do it the same way. Take our three quarter spacer, put it on the bottom. Take our 45, put it in the corner. It's gapped off of the bottom, three quarters of an inch. Put one nail in there and then use our saw to cut it flush to the top. Kind of using the side and the top as a guide to keep the saw flat. off pull the spacer out and this is going to go back to the bottom then you'll basically be you have a perfect angle and just enough space to fit the top in there because it actually fits inside the baffle and the two sides Got the nail stuck in here. All right. If you guys are just tuning in, let me know where you're, where you're watching from, who's all in here. If you haven't already, make sure you like the video. All right, we got another 45 in there. All right, so that'll basically do it for the inside of the box. We got all the window braces in there, got the port in there, got all the 45s that we need. Basically, all we have left is the top. I do want to make some notches along the top just to make sure there's plenty of clearance for the motors. So I'm going to go mark up kind of how far I want to go with that on the baffle, and then I'll transfer that to the top. The subs are spaced evenly, so I'm going to go side to side and kind of transfer the numbers back and forth.
Sander off the table. All right, so I got the marks where my cutouts need to be. Some marking straight lines. Get a better idea of how big they're going to be. Okay. Look at my paperwork, see what the mounting depth is. Okay, 5 and 15 16. So, we you know our cutout needs to be at least that big, deducting the inch that we have of thickness for the baffle. So, 4 and 15 16. So, we're just going to make it 5 inches. 5 inches. So we got our three areas marked out for our sub motors to have clearance. I'm going to add some rounded edges to that. Let's see. Here we go. Just kind of using whatever round pieces I have around the shop as like a template to use to guide my pencil. All right, so we got all those marked out. We really don't need to mark them out. I'm gonna cut out one and then get a piece of scrap wood, stack it on top, kind of create myself a template to do the next two, just so I know they're all, you know, as even as they can be. I'm gonna pull out the jigsaw. We're gonna cut one up. This one we gotta be careful with because we wanna make sure this is, you know, as straight as possible. We're using this as our template, basically. What the heck? Is it this cord? Oh boy. Oh no, now I'm having issues with my cord. Man, what the heck is with this thing? All my tools are dying at the same time. There's one notch, and I gotta find a piece of scrap wood over here that's about the same size. We wanted to, you know, inch or so overhang on each end. 
Um, I think this piece, this piece should work good. Oh yeah, that'll work good. Okay. So basically, I'm stacking a piece of scrap wood on top of it. And see here. And then I'm going to brad nail that on there. We're going to take this over to the router and um, use the flush trim bit to cut this out. Bring you guys back over to the router once I get this piece over there. to the router table. Oh geez, almost dropped the camera. All right, so I'm going to take my flush trim bit, which I already have set up in the router, ready to go. And I'm going to copy my first cutout. So now I got two pieces, and this is now going to be my template for the other two. Well, other right here, the other two notches that I got to do. We're going to leave you guys over there for now because I'm basically just going to be prying this piece off of here and sticking it on top of our next area. I got to cut out. And you probably could jigsaw this in the same amount of time, but my concern is that I really want the, all the holes and the cutouts to be as similar as possible. And also, too, you know, you don't have to worry as much about messing up if you cut one to the best of your ability and then use that as a template, basically. All right, so I'm going to stack it right on top of my other piece. There we go, nail it on. Back to the router table. Oh, this thing's way too cramped. second cut out and one more. So I'm just going to pry this piece off there. I know you guys can't see any of this, but probably get the gist just based off of narration. place this thing back on top right where we drew our lines again and remember it's the same size for all three of them nail it back on just using four nails just enough to kind of hold it in place um, while I'm using the router you could use template tape if you had any but I don't typically have template tape here all right Third notch. 
now it's done. Now we're gonna take it back over to the box. We'll take you guys back over once I get this set up over here. And these kicker CVXs are probably small enough where you wouldn't need to do any of this. But I just want to be sure that there's not going to be any clearance issues. And also, this will possibly give the customer, you know, a little bit of upgrade wiggle room. Although, three tens inside of an underseat enclosure without doing like an insane seat lift is kind of a, a heavy task. So, not sure whatever other three tens will fit in there besides this. Even the CVXs. These are borderline, it's about as small of a volume as you'd want to put them in. But with the shared chamber, I think it should definitely do really good. All right, we're going to pull our little template off. This is basically trash now. Again, I made it out of scrap wood. It's a big reason why I kind of keep scraps around too is for the fact that I can usually repurpose stuff afterwards. Okay, so you see we got our notches on the top here. That's going to give us plenty of clearance for our woofers. And normally I would do like a fiberglass notch. On this, I'm going to keep it a little simpler. And I'm going to do a wood notch. I guess I will repurpose this piece here. Um, I'm going to cut this and use this as basically a spacer. So what I want to, what I want to do is take a three-quarter piece as a spacer, put it on top of here, and then we'll have a cap that goes on top of that as well. So... We need one for both sides. We will have to modify it a little bit because I need it to go onto the baffle. I might even just start with a new piece. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. We'll see. Okay. Get another piece of scrap wood over here. This one should be good. Okay, so now we're making the spacer pieces. We need three of each of these. Now I wanted to have, you know, this is like an open U. I wanted to have a bar across because I want it to go on the top of our baffle. It'll kind of even help us seal it off. So we gotta take a little lip. I'll find another piece of whatever wood I got here. And let me see. Piece of scrap wood. Let's see if it's gonna be too thick. No, actually that's pretty good. All right, so basically I'll just use this to add to the front of the U. Just kind of like that. All right. Hi Dome, what's up man? Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. It's crazy how back in the day, like early 2000s, everyone would run separate chambers. Nobody wanted a shared chamber. It was said that subs could cancel each other out. What happened to that myth? Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. I've definitely seen people um, favor like a, a shared chamber, or sorry, separate chambers over seal chambers. Dang it, I can't talk at all. Okay, I've seen people prefer individual chamber over shared chamber. I've never really heard of the cancellation thing. I didn't really never. I never really looked into it too much. Um, I heard shared chamber was better from a couple people that I kind of trusted, and I ran with it. And ever since then, it's kind of done me. It's done me real good. So I'm gonna keep doing it, I guess. Sorry, I can't get too technical with you on that answer, but that's kind of about all I know, to be honest with you. All right, so we got our basic shape. Hopefully, you guys can see that. If the camera will get in there. All right, so we got our basic shape drawn out in pencil. We're going to cut this out with the jigsaw, then we're going to stack it on top of our scrap piece, add that little straight piece we got, and that'll give us the shape that we need this thing to be. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So here's our spacer shape. So I guess probably the easiest thing to do would just be actually have this straight and then trim it down. clean up the corners a little bit with the sander just kind of soften up them rounded edges definitely not perfect with the jigsaw this down slightly. All right, so this is what we're going to be cutting out on the router. Oh, I better drill a starter hole on that. All right, bring you guys back over to the router station. All right, now we're going to use our template and cut out this piece. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
piece. Now we'll use this and copy this three more times. And I think I'll just leave you guys over here. Yeah, you guys can look at the router. I'm basically, it's going to be going back and forth and nailing pieces onto this and then bringing it back to the router table, copying it. We already have one, so we need two more. If you guys are just tuning in, drop me a comment on the video. Let me know you're watching. Let me know you're here. Alright, so we got one more scrap piece on here. Gonna line it up. Nail it on. One, two, three, four nails. Oh, need our center hole drilled out. Alright, so here's the next scrap piece with our template nailed onto it. We're going to cut this out now. For no particular reason, I'm cutting the side, uh, the outside first. It just, I just think you could cut the inside out first. Hopefully you guys can hear me over the router and that. Yeah, I'm going to cut the inside Now we gotta cut the inside out. Alright. Man, that vacuum is really strong. It's like separate into the table even. I finally got some dust collection set up on this thing. <laughs> Our second piece now back to find another scrap piece nail on there and trace this out again if you guys are just tuning in we're working on a 2018 ford f-150 enclosure for three kicker cvx 10s this is the four this is the fourth part of a, a i don't even know how many part series but this is the fourth one so thank you guys for tuning in if you like what you see make sure you like the video Drop me a comment below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for tons of great, great live content. Well, I post regular videos as well, so. All right, so we got the scrap piece on here. Forgot to drill the centering hole out. Drill that out. Boom. Okay. Now, take it back over to the router table. We got another scrap piece nailed onto our templates. I just keep them all stacked together. It just makes it a little easier to handle as well. Again, for no particular reason, I'm going to cut the outside extra material away first. Um, you could do it either way. This is just the way I prefer it. Back it on. Back it on.
side part. Turn the router off. Oh, wait for that. Oh my gosh, that didn't sound very good when it stopped. Let's, let's hope this ain't coming to the end of its life too. Um, I'm going to get some more scrap pieces nailed on because we need three caps for this as well. So three more pieces to do. But this time we're only going to be cutting out the outside of our piece. This is basically going to be the cap. What's going to seal it off. Oh, that's a perfect size. All right, so I'm gonna stack my scrap piece on there. And I'm using three quarter ply to do this. There is a variation of different plywood I am using for this top specifically, but it is all birch. It just varies between Baltic birch and uh, like imported birch. So we don't need a centering hole this time because, again, all we need is a cap for this thing. So we got four pieces on here so far. We're going to router out this one now, making it, well, this is four already. So five total pieces. One is obviously trash because it was just used as a template. But... <laughs> cap two more caps to go oh my god i don't know if you guys can hear that router but when it stops spinning it sounds pretty awful i don't like it kind of sounds like the bearing is seen uh seen better days Another piece on. Got all of our other pieces on here still. One more. Oh my gosh, makes me cringe hearing that router stop. That bearing is sounding really worn out. I've only had the thing for five or six years, and it's cut a probably way more material than it's ever been designed to cut. Lived a good life. Oh, 
All right. And finally, our last piece. a pretty thick stack of plywood here again this is going to be for all three of our pieces i believe i did that right one two three one two three yes i did okay bring you guys back over to the table saw area All right. <coughs> so now we gotta take apart all of our layers. Put away a few things first. Get this table actually workable. Right.
There's one top. We got the other two right here. Again, these are the kind of caps for our motor clearance humps. Again, I don't have the subs in shop, and it's kind of hard to really render up exactly where the subs are going to, you know, hit or not hit the top. So this is kind of an extra precautionary thing, but better safe than sorry. I don't believe this will actually be needed, but I'd rather do it now than realize the subs don't fit later. All right, so we got these pieces here and these pieces here. Basically, they're going to go together and create like a three-quarter inch space that the motors will have extra for clearance. Now, obviously, this does kind of protrude a lot off the top. I'm going to take a big router bit and actually put a detail on all four corners. Might even round this off a little bit first, but for now, we'll get them started by getting them glued together. And this is trash, this is trash, scrap trash. Oh my gosh, misfired. Snail gun is ready to be replaced, that's for sure. Hmm. James. good hopefully there's one Spread the glue out on the piece evenly, as evenly as I can with my finger, that is. We got one more to do.
Alright, alright. Now I'm going to take these back to the router just to trim them up one more time. I'm just gonna sand just some soft, just some softer edges on these. Not going too crazy, just a little bit. take you guys back over to the router table once I get all these pieces over there because we're going to be taking our router bit and putting a detail on the outside edge which also kind of help transition it between the hump of this little cutout piece we're doing and the top of the box make it look a little better a little more finished All right, to the router table. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get this camera set up a little bit better for you. So here we go. That looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to exchange my flush trim bit for my large chamfer bit. This thing is definitely a beast. I've used it in the handheld router, but uh, I definitely don't like it. 
I'll say that for sure. With a bit this big, we're definitely going to do multiple, uh, multiple progressions, take out little by little. You definitely don't want to try to do it all at once. Man, I prepared for that thing to be like Hulk tight. It was barely on there. It's kind of scary. All right. That's off. Put the bigger collet on there. What's left to do on the 18's box? Um, I got two coats of clear on there so far. Um, or no, sorry. One coat of clear on there, actually. Got one more coat to do on that. Oh, my gosh. I'm putting on my quarter inch collet. What am I doing? All right, half inch. All right, three eighths, whatever the hell this is. Half inch, I think. Yeah, I already got the LEDs in the box. I got it stained. I got one coat of clear in there. I got to sand that down and then um, do probably two more coats at least. Possibly a third more coat. We'll see how it goes. Basically, I just I go until it looks good. Okay, like I said, we're gonna take this down in steps. So I'm just gonna eyeball up what I think is a good amount. That looks good. Not too much. Not too little. Turn the vacuum on. Alright, so you can see again the difference between the old the last pass and this current pass. 
about as high as we're going to be able to get before the router bit will start creating like a step down in it, which we obviously don't want. Okay, so here goes nothing. Turn the router on. Alright, so now you guys can see again, this is our last pass, and then this is the final pass. So you can see it took out more each and every time. It went from being an inch and a half to about uh, five inches. 
Já pensou em uma palavra, meu to the assembly area if you guys are just tuning in make sure you drop a comment on the video and uh, like it subscribe to the channel if you're not already we're working on a 2018 Ford F-150 enclosure for three kicker CVX 10s we were just making the top pumps for uh, you know just a little added security to make sure that these motors clear the CVXs don't have that big of a motor on them or a basket, but just want to be, you know, extra double sure. All right, so let's see here. Jackson, you asked, hey, I asked a question yesterday about calculating port area for multiple subs. I added 50% of the area for each extra sub and got 35 inches squared for four eights do you think this would be enough each sub is 13 square inches um 35 square inches of port for four eights i mean in an under seat situation yes it's only 800 watts and small motors but i'm trying to learn um you could probably do more but it depends what situation you're in. Um, like, I believe this this enclosure, for example, you know, it's three tens, and we only have 25 square inches of port area because, really, you're so restricted on fitting the subs in there with enough space and having enough port area to the box. Now, it definitely probably sounds scary to you, 25 square inches for three tens and you're talking about doing four eights um, and 35 square inches of port area but again it's really in the under seats man you're really just trying to get the best you can with your given circumstances and under a seat in a truck you definitely have some limited circumstances as far as that goes normally I would never do three tens under a seat Thankfully, the Fords, they don't have a center hump, so that makes it a lot easier when it comes to, first of all, fitting it on the baffle of the box, but also, you know, that hump does take out some airspace. Not a ton, but enough.
I would say typically my 4 8 enclosures have about 25 to 32 square inches of pour area. And that's usually just how it turns out for what will actually fit inside the box after all the displacement. You know, you don't want to start making the, the enclosure volume too small over trying to fit more pour area, in my opinion. All right, so now I'm just gonna smooth these out a little bit with the sander. Um, I wanna get this edge a little bit rounder. Again, this is a chamfer bit, so it's like a 45 degree angle almost. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to drop it in, in the comment section. I'll answer you guys' questions when I get some time. If I know how to answer it, I'll answer it. Thank you. 
So I'm going to wait to add these and I'm going to temporarily attach the top. There's some 45s and different angles I like to cut along the top and top and bottom of the back um, that I'd like to do with my table saw. And if I put those little hump pieces on there now, it'll kind of inhibit me from doing that. Clean up our work area a little bit here. Okay, put away the nail gun a little too soon. Okay, again, so this is just going to be nailed on temporarily so I can get my angles, angles on the outside cut on here because I won't be able to do it with the hump on. And I also want to be able to secure the hump from the inside using screws. So I'm just going to tack this on here, a few spots with some nails. That'll hold it on good enough for me to get the cuts I need. All right, so now we'll get you guys a different angle, move you to the other side of the table saw. That way you guys can actually see the action going on, cutting this thing. Okay. Now I'm hoping I don't lose you guys due to a low battery, but this thing definitely don't charge as fast as it takes um, takes battery. That's for sure. Thank you. 
Okay, so the first cut I'm going to make is along the top of the enclosure on the back wall. Probably going to... Now, the top is already angled, so you got to remember that your angle is going to kind of compound off of that in itself. So I don't want to add too big of an angle. Um, basically, the, the less of an angle, the bigger it's going to be because your top is already at an angle. So... By saying, I don't want to add too big of an angle, I'm basically going to put it to 45. That way it cuts off as little as possible. All right. And this, again, is going to be probably something that you make multiple cuts at. You don't want to take off too much. This is really just, you know, a lot of it's visually, it'll look a lot better. But also, I believe it helps it fit just just that much better inside the truck. All right, we're gonna try this one here. Raise your blade up a little bit. I'm gonna get my little cheapy mask on. All right, here goes nothing. take off more than that so I'll set it back up I'm gonna move the fence closer to the blade which will give us a heavier cut on the back end pull it back again shop I swear the breaker popped I'm likely going to lose you guys
Well, I'm not sure if I completely lost you guys or not. I may have when the breaker trip to internet goes out. So, I mean, it kind of looks like we're still here. Let's see if I can get comments pulled up. Oh my gosh, of course this internet is going to take forever and a day to load back up to any sort of useful, if it'll even get to that point. Let's see here, are we going to be able to load StreamYard back up and still actually have this stream going? We'll see. Oh, kind of looks like we still have it going. Let me know, guys. Yeah, the the real down. All right, guys. Well, hopefully I'm back. All right. Well, unfortunately, not that I'd like to end it on such a bad note with the power going out and the breaker popping and endless complications with the stream. Um, I think it's a sign. We're going to take a break from the stream. We're going to be back streaming tonight. Once I get a little bit further on this box, we may be even into the body filler stage. But thank you guys so much for watching. I will be back on another episode. If you're watching this far, make sure you comment below 1728. If you're commenting 
if you're even if you're at, watching after the live stream that is um, just helps me know who's all watching to the end of our videos I appreciate appreciate each and every one of you guys I'm starting to forget how to talk it's another sign it is time to end the stream we've already been going for an hour and a half again guys I appreciate each and every one of you for coming in and viewing we will be back with a part five later on end to this Ford F-150 saga so thank you guys for viewing and I'll be back later on